So, you know, living room, we're in this room all the time. The, the brightness level is great. Um, we would love more of these. Sure. We come into the playroom <laughs> and it's just... It's a little bit dark. darker. Yeah, there's no lights. Um, we've got this kind of dingy lamp over here. We do have a switch. Okay. But it doesn't really do anything though. Right, so chances are that it goes to a receptacle somewhere in this room, but it's obviously not the one the lamp's plugged into, so you have to kind of turn that on manually still. And it's not worth moving around. We don't like the light from that lamp anyway. We're looking at doing the recessed in here. So I think that's definitely possible, but there are a couple of things we want to take a look at. First being is, what do we have above us? Do we have a closet, a bedroom? It's a bathroom. It's a bathroom, of course. <laughs> so we're going to have to take some measurements and kind of get an idea of where some of the drain pipes may land, some of the other water pipes. It's going to limit us as far as room and getting a recessed light in there, but we do have some options with some thinner versions that we can still make work. Uh, next thing is I want to take a look in the basement. I think it's unfinished under this portion. You can take a look and see some of the framing, get an idea of how things are built, what the spacing is, and what we might run into in the ceiling and the wall. With that being said, I think we can get a couple of recessed lights in here fairly easily if you want to go ahead and get started. Awesome. Yeah, sounds great. All right, let's turn the power off and get to it. All right, Katie, uh, before we go making any holes, we want to do as much exploration into seeing where things are as we can. So we know we have that bathroom upstairs. It's always a concern. But when we did our measurements, we found that the plumbing is really only rolling along the wall over here. It shouldn't be too much in the way for us coming out of the wall switch up to our first light. I think we'll be okay with that. The other thing we took a look at were the floor joists in the basement, kind of get an idea of where things may be running. And from looking at that and taking down one of the recessed lights in the living room, we found the floor joists go this way. This is perfect. This will let us come out of that switch, come up the wall, and right down this first bay to our recessed lights. That should make it easy for us. The other thing we found when we took down that recessed light is we have strapping as well. We thought we would in this house, but it's good to verify. Once we have that, that'll let us go this way to the recessed lights without doing any more damage. We should be able to snake right underneath the floor joist in between the strapping to go from light to light and we should be good. Now, we did find what that switch controlled. It is a receptacle in this room. We actually have constant power on the bottom half of this receptacle, and the top half was controlled by that switch. We're gonna rewire that so that the whole receptacle has constant power, and we're also gonna let us send power over here, so we're gonna have constant power at the switch. Then we can come out of the switch, up the wall to the recessed lights, so that'll still control the lights, constant power there, and we should be good. I'm glad you're here with me, Heath. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, let's, let's get started. All right, so we turned the breaker off. I want to make sure it's really off before we go ahead and take anything apart. So I'm just going to plug the tester in to be sure. All right, that is off. So I'll take the screwdriver for starters, and we'll take that plate off. Great, and now the screw gun, please. Perfect. All right, Katie, so this is how that switched receptacle works. So we have constant power here where all these wires are tied together under this wire nut and a single wire coming to this brass screw. That's actually powering this bottom receptacle constantly. Now, normally there'd be a brass tab right here that would connect the two so they'd both be live all the time. This has been broken off so that only the bottom half is live. Now, what they did is they took a 14-2 and tied the white wire to the constant power as well. This is what actually is sending power back out to our switch on that white wire. And when you turn the switch on, it comes back on this black wire right here to this screw. That would liven up this top receptacle. So if you plug the lamp into this top guy, when you turn that switch on and off, that's what would turn on and off. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this, replace this, uh, and make this all constant power as one. I'll give you that. I'll take the new one. Perfect. And could I have the yellow handle needle nose, please? And if we look at that one, we actually have that brass tab in place that keeps both of these tied together. Okay. And this white wire that was sending power back up is now going to become a neutral like it is everywhere else. And if you want to pass me one of those tan wire nuts. Great. And next we're going to do the same thing for the black wires. Fold that in the back as well. And then we'll do the same for the black wire. And then we can go ahead and tuck this back in and screw it into place.
And lastly, the plate. Next, we're going to go ahead and take this switch out. All right, and there we can see the white wire that was coming up providing power. And then when you turn this on, it would close and send power back down the black. And we're just going to take this off. And then we're going to take a multi-tool, go up at an angle, cut the nail up here, cut it up here, and we should be able to slide this right out. Something like that. All right, so now we'll take the mirror. This is the easiest way to look up inside here. We can tip this back and forth and look up that bay. Nothing coming through the top plate, so it looks like we should be clear for drilling. Awesome. I'm going to use a dust shroud to keep the dust from falling everywhere in the room. There it is. I'm also going to drill a hole through the top plate of the wall to give us a place to run the wire from the switch up to the ceiling. Katie, I'm going to push the wire up the wall and try and get it across the hole I just oh. drilled. Can you reach and try and catch it? Got it. <laughs> All right, we'll take that out a little bit. There we go. All right, so now that we have this through, we're going to take our wire, just going to make a little loop through that end, squeeze that shut so it's flat, and then we're going to tape it as smooth as possible so we can pull it back down through that hole to our switch box. And perfect, just like that. Look at that. And now we'll just uh, fish the wires over to the couple of other holes and we'll start putting the recessed lights in. Now we can start wiring the fixtures. These lights actually have two components, the junction box where the wiring goes and an LED fixture that plugs into that junction box. I'll start by wiring the junction box with the wire that has a hot, neutral, and ground conductor. The junction box goes up into the hole in the ceiling. It secures in place by installing a screw and then hanging the junction box on the keyhole slot in the back. And now for the light. These LED recessed lights work great for retrofit applications because of how thin they are. All you do is plug the fixture into the junction box, install the junction box in the hole you cut, and then the clamps on the fixture itself hold it in place in the ceiling. And finally, we're going to install a dimmer in place of the switch that controlled the receptacles before. Power's back on, the lights are all made up. You want to do so, the honors and give them a try? Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> that looks really good. No, it's nice and bright in here. Now you can actually see everything. We put a dimmer on it if you do want to drop it down a little bit, and you should be good. Awesome. Looks so good. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.